Hi everyone, this is Odd Apostrophe. Let's continue our game of Iwahime on PC. The second part was in a sealed envelope and read thus. Read this only when you can no longer bear the stones in your stomach. Her mother had foreseen this. She'd predicted that the day when the soot sealing spell broke would not be far off. The sound of Suzumu punching the straw-wrapped tree resounded over and over again. Once he had punched with his eyes wide open, seeking earnestness. But it was a bit different now. His eyes were squinted and a bit out of focus. However, he wasn't slacking on his training. His fist was to be dedicated to God in gratitude. To dedicate an offering to God meant committing it to the flames. If that were the case, then it was the offering, not the act of throwing it in fire, that was important. The same went for the divine tribute style. What mattered was not the act of punching, but offering thanks to the god. Punching was a way to offer dedication to god, but the punch itself was not the thing dedicated. Suzumu now felt he understood a little of what his father had taught him. Though the divine tribute style involved punching, it could never be perfected by anyone merely thrusting his fist. Aja Kencho crushed, crush evil and demonstrate the righteous path. Those words had been passed down since ancient times through the Susahara divine tribute style. That was its spirit. The fist was nothing more than a way to convey that. Suzumu would continue training until he reached the essence of the divine tribute style. And once he did, he could save everyone's suffering from the hauntings. He had defeated a divine curse the other day. Perhaps it was a fluke, perhaps it was coincidence. But he felt that he'd attained something at that moment. And perhaps he had, but he would attain more. Set. So, let's go through um, Kane. Uh, I think this was the Elise in Wonderland. Um, so this should be taking a, a much different turn than original, the original story. At least I hope so. I came across the Hatter and Rabbit having a tea party during a stroll through the Arcane Minobe Kingdom. They would always drink tea in whatever open spaces they could find in the thicket of giant mushrooms. The pair held their elegant tea parties on a large table covered by a tablecloth. 
I would join in on them if I ever happened across one. でも自分の部屋に閉じこもってネットしてるだけ。簡単簡単。うっしゅしゅしゅ。それって、かじれる親の爪があるうちでしょ。ご両親が食わせてくれなくなったらどうすんの親が死んだらその時は俺も死ぬよ
guess my only choice was to save up money as best I could. ね、ボスよ。それは言えない。貴族の秘密。親が死んで使い切れないほど遺産が Let me guess, you are wondering if there's really a bathroom in a magical coal kingdom's mushroom forest. Well, the answer is yes. See? There's a door in that large mushroom there. The door says bathroom on it, right? Okay then, gotta take care of my business. Boy, was this refreshing. Nothing like the great outdoors to make you feel alive. All right, time to go back to that crazy tea party. Truth be told, I was getting sick of their conversation. Besides, they would just make me drink more of that tea. I decided to take a little walk first before returning, and say I'd waged war in that bathroom. Wait, that meant I really was a perfect fit for the Mad Hatter and March, tea, March Hare's tea party. Why was it the crazy types always took to me? Was it because I was a good listener? Or did I have this scent that drew them to me? I turned around to go back to the party when suddenly I noticed a mushroom with a sliding door. Hmm, was there always a mushroom house there? I was in Wonderland after all. All it took was a little curiosity for a new adventure to begin. Still, it was funny to see something as Japanese as a sliding door here. Upon closer inspection, I noticed something that further piqued my interest. The edges of the door were duct taped. Normally, you couldn't lock Japanese sliding doors, yet here was a clear declaration they didn't want anyone going inside. It was just like cheap packing tape from a 100 yen shop. It had totally lost its adhes uh, adhesivity, making it a cinch to tear off. With that, there was nothing in my way. The treasure was mine. A stale stench leaked out the moment I opened the door. What's more, the floor of the small room was invisible under a thick layer of garbage bags, supermarket bags to be exact, bursting with trash. I stepped forward, undaunted by the piles of trash. My instincts were screaming to me there was treasure hidden in this garbage. Only one way to find out what it was.
なのに毎日お茶会して過ごせる秘密がきっとここにあるはず And so I tossed them all aside. Inside the garbage bags were empty cans of potato chips and snacks, as well as empty convenience store lunch boxes. The stench was caused by sauces and such that had stuck to the lunch boxes. I threw out the garbage bags one after another until I could finally see the floor. Oh? Well, well, a futon. Why would the Hatter use a bedroom with a futon all laid out as a garbage dump? No, hold on. The futon had to be more camouflage. The secret of the treasure had to be inside. I would finally learn the source of his noble wealth. I pulled back the covers and found a corpse wearing pajamas. Just then, I heard the Hatter yelling from the front door. そんなことできません。母は神経質なんです。そういうのダメなんです。本当にお母さん、在宅されてるんですよね。してますよ。だから言うって言ってるじゃないですか。実はですね、親類の方から捜索願いが出てるんです。去年からずっと連絡が取れ
見てない見てない見てない嘘だろ見ちゃっただろ The Hatter's face swelled as tumors emerged like goosebumps. Before long, the skin on his face bulged and rolled right off in chunks. It wasn't just his face. The same thing was happening to his hands, and likely the rest of him as well. More and more of his skin peeled off like flakes with each second. His rotten flesh then became seared, exuding a foul stench like burning hair. I already understood what had happened. Once he knew he was cornered, he had tried to burn everything down that night. He must have been planning to cover his tracks with the fire at first. But when he tried carefully pouring kerosene over his mother's corpse, he saw her skeleton for the first time in so long. And when he did, he was like a man possessed. Before he knew it, he was covered from head to toe in kerosene. And then he flicked the lighter. Swallowed by flames, he rolled on the ground in agony as all his skin burned away. The Hatter wrapped his arms around me. My body was immediately engulfed by the hellfire. My hair was reduced to cinders in the blink of an eye, and my whole body was wrapped in searing pain. All my skin burst open before it could burn away and started rolling off in clumps. It burns. It burns. It hurts. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. It seemed I'd fallen asleep in a weird position on the sofa, having grown bored of watching TV. My joints hurt. On top of that, I'd been having yet another horrible nightmare. The haze in my head refused to clear up. My eyes were spinning. My stomach churned. Whatever daydream I'd had this time must have been really messed up. It was 7 p.m. My stomach was empty, but I wasn't hungry. Still, though, I had to eat. It didn't look like Mom would come home today, either. Oh well. I just saved my money on the half-price side dishes at the supermarket. I'd never had to keep receipts or give back change. All the money came from my allowance, so the more I could save, the better. I reached out for the mushroom. No, table. My wallet was sitting on. Uh, I wasn't hungry, so I thought I'd maybe just go to bed. There was a soft mushroom lying there. It'd make a perfect bed. Just then, I heard the front door unlocking. It was followed by a buzz and the flapping of wings. The queen bee. No, mom was home. Great, my mind was still in a total haze. Mushrooms were sprouting all over the place. The tables, sofas, and TV all turned into springy mushrooms. I could hear Mom talking. It seemed she wasn't alone. My brain really was on the fritz if I was seeing her as the Queen Bee.
かなえちゃん昨日は帰れなくて本当にごめんなさい田中さんのご家族の皆さんとよう同士でお話ししちゃってでもね本当に本当に素晴らしいお話が聞けたのよかなえちゃんも絶対に今度は一緒に行きましょうねあと今日はお母さんちゃんとご飯を作るから期待してね別にいいよ今から何か買いに行こうと思ってたから聞いて聞いて今日のご飯は素敵なのチーズフォンデュって知ってるチーズフォンデュだってお鍋みたいに家族みんなでつついて家族愛を感じられるんですかなえちゃんもチーズと家族の愛情でホクホクになろうねそうなんですかはあそれは楽しみです家族揃っての食事これぞ家族愛そして家族の人数が多ければ多いほど食事も美味しくいただけるのですまったくですわね田中さんの言う通りですわ Personally, I'd be much more relaxed eating on my own than putting up with this nonsense. Oh well, home cooked meals are the best money savers. Plus, keeping Mr. Tanaka in good spirits was also important. He was really generous when he was in a good mood. All I had to do was put up with how much he resembled a monstrous caterpillar. The fog would just. The fog just wouldn't go away. Apparently, Mom was up all night chatting with Mr. Tanaka's family. I was surprised she hadn't grown or gotten tired of it, but as long as she was enjoying herself and it made her happy, I wasn't going to complain. Even now, she was cooking while basking in Mr. Tanaka's lofty ideals. I wrap my arms around my knees and kill time staring at the TV. かなえちゃんはお腹どのくらい空いてるこのくらいで足りるかなあんまり食欲ないんでそんなに多くなくていいですそろそろいい感じになってきたと思うぞどれどれ Mr. Tanaka grinned triumphantly as he checked the heat level of the portable stove they bought just for this He must have thought it was his winning smile but It didn't hit the strike zone. Mr. Tanaka stuck his fork into the French bread they'd cut into cubes and dipped it into the pot of cheese. In my dazed mind, it looked as if they were sticking a gecko or something into a mysterious magical cauldron. Mr. Tanaka then brought it to his mouth and bit a chunk of it off. Mmm! Oishi! -hmm. <laughs> He abruptly held out the half eaten piece of bread to me. Gooey strings of cheese hung from it. To me, it looked like his saliva disgusting me thoroughly. But I was a tactician, so I put on my million dollar smile and ate it anyway. After all, he'd given me lots of allowance if I kept him in a good mood. I killed my taste buds so I wouldn't have to taste his spit, but it made me feel like I was eating a lump of clay. Let me explain my family's circumstances to all you rabbits who aren't in the know. First of all, my father left to subjugate a witch from the north and never came back. I'm not sure if he died in battle or went into exile, but whatever the case, the queen bee was buried in grief. I just didn't get her, even though she did nothing but fight with him while he was around, 
She started wailing like a baby after he left us. Then one day, the Sitch King suddenly appeared to her. The Sitch King, no, Mr. Tanaka, was in the enviable position of being prosperous without having to work. It seemed to involve real estate income or something. At first I thought she'd gone out and found herself her own lover too, not to be outdone by Dad, but apparently that wasn't the case. From what I could tell, as a woman myself, she displayed no sexual interest whatsoever in Mr. Tanaka. It seemed he extolled the sanctity of familial love, or whatever, in an attempt to bring the bliss of harmony back to our fatherless house. That seemed to fill the hole in Mom's heart to the point where she now truly considered Mr. Tanaka family. Mr. Tanaka was quite amiable to the two of us and encouraged us to see him that way. To me, that was more disgusting than any sexual motives, in a sense. The familial love Mr. Tanaka spoke of was to treat others and be treated in turn like family, despite the lack of any blood relations. He thought of it as something sacred that not even lovers could infringe upon. Mom was apparently good with that and had no objections to Mr. Tanaka's family, but I couldn't stay, say the same. That was why I found treating Mr. Tanaka like family an utterly revolting notion. Of course, I knew he didn't have any ill will, so I couldn't just reject him outright. What's more, Mom had already found herself a new family she treasured more than Dad, and she was her own person. She had the right to bury the sorrow from her lost love and take a new path in life, however she pleased. So I wanted to honor that and keep my own right to do the same. Thus, I no longer held any particular attachments to this home. It was merely the only place I could stay out of the elements for free. As Princess, Princess Elise, I wanted to leave on a journey as soon as I could. But that required money, so I had to prepare as much as I could. Fortunately, Mom had been leaving me food money ever since she started going to Mr. Tanaka's family associations all the time. That, plus the allowance Mr. Tanaka would give me when he was in a good mood, were valuable sources of income. I had my adventure's bag packed so I could go on a journey whenever. Inside was the minimum I needed to sleep out and all the travel expenses I'd saved up to this point. That bag was hidden in the door containing the water and electricity meters outside the house, so I could leave home whenever. And once I did, I never wanted to come back again. I had tens of thousands of yen saved up, so I could last a decent while if I drifted between manga cafes and friends' houses but only for as long as a child's allowance would last. I, it wouldn't be long until I could graduate, then I wouldn't be a child anymore. I needed more and more money so I could work and find a place to live. Thus, why my Arakane Minobi Kingdom never had enough money. That's why Princess Elisa's quest for gold was still ongoing. して3人で仲良くご飯してるとまるで本当に家族みたいねほんとの家族みたいああそのなんと素晴らしいことかなえちゃんもそう思わないなんか和むわよねうんまあ<笑> Mom and Mr. Tanaka were trying to stress how well the three of us got along. I took the hint and pretended to agree. But in reality, the whole thing made me sick. However, I couldn't let them catch on. So I faked a smile and made a show of enjoying the dry cured ham and whatnot they were having. Oh boy, not again. My brain really had it out for me today. The house was filled with mushrooms once more. The queen bee went to the river to wash the tableware after dinner. I sat on the sofa to watch TV 
only for the Siege King to lumber over and sit right next to me. I'd be damned if I was about to sit shoulder to shoulder watching TV with this creep. So I decided that it, I'd be the one to make the suggestion today. This guy really was all talk. He fell for the same tricks no matter how much he lost. I may not look it, but in my golden years I was obsessed with chess. I'd read all the chess manuals and was a master of basic strategy, so I'd never lose to some amateur whose knowledge amounted only to knowing how knights moved. I'm not kidding. He really did think he knew how to play chess just because he understood how the pieces worked. He didn't even know about castling or en passant until I taught him. That was why I was on a winning streak. And so for some reason or another, excuse me, So for some reason or another, he treated me like his rival and kept stubbornly challenging me over and over again. What's that? You're saying this was siege, not chess? Oh well, who cares? They're basically the same thing. When the Siege King clapped, a giant treasure chest appeared out of thin air and shook the ground with a thud. It was filled to the rim with gold coins and gems. I was grateful. This would ease the Arcane Minobi Kingdom's financial woes. He truly was a modern noble who could feed himself off unearned income, and he was always so generous. The queen bee was brewing sickening, sickeningly sweet honey tea. She poured it into three mugs of red, yellow, and green. Yeah, seriously, like a stoplight. On the surface, it was like the three of us were really family. Like we were just having some good old fun after dinner. Alrighty then, I'd take this guy to the cleaners. あれ。みのめ先輩。お、今日って社長ごぶあったっけ。俺、鈴間になっていいじゃん。遊びに来たの。いや、たまたま通りかかったんで覗いたら先輩の姿が見えたもんで。先輩お一人ですか。カネ was the only one in the club room. シャチホコブは毎日オープンしてるから別に部活の日じゃなくても構わないんだよだからいつでも植えるかもそうだったんですか先輩は何やってるんですか今度老人ホームで何かだしものをやるみたいなことをタマユンが言ってたからさ
日はデュエルの約束がありましてナッチカードゲーム好きだね結構強いんだ大会とか出ますしイベントでも武者修行しまくってるっすよ僕も今度大会に連れてってもらうことになってるんです一緒にグレートデュエリストの道を求道しようぜ俺たちで優勝も準優勝もそうなめだぜ<笑>頑張れ応援してるよじゃあすいませんもうガキどもを待ってると思うんで失礼しまーすナッツィア said his goodbyes and ran off in a hurry あれスズノは行かないのアイデアを考えるの付き合ってくれると助かるって言いませんでしたナッチとグレートデュエリストを目指すんじゃないのお手伝いさせてください先輩やっぱスズムはいい子だな社長こぶって六人でしたっけどんなことができるかなお芝居とかどうでしょうおー定番が来たねでもクロッチが来るかはわかんないから5人でも6人でも対応できるのじゃないとねじゃあ黒髪さんは木の役かな<笑>笑えるえ他には何かある That's right Minobe goes to the club room every day whether we have club activities or not I tried asking her about it since it didn't exactly seem like it was out of passion for the club, but she dodged the question. じゃあ、ミノベ先輩はお母さんと二人暮らしなんですかもうちょっと厄介らしいわ。カネイズ・マザー、フロッド・ウィッド・ハート・ブレイク・アフター・ハート・アフター・ハート・アフター・アフター・アフター・アフター・アフター・アフター・アフター・アフター・アフター・アフター・アフター・アフター・アフター・アフター・アフター・アフター・アフター・アフター・アフター・アフター・アフター・アフター・アフター・ They said he gave excellent advice on life problems and helped others with broken hearts. But according to the rumors, he was a con artist who would make his victims dependent on him, only to take their homes and all their assets. Decades ago, it had been a popular technique to brainwash the impressionable and initiate them in fishy new religions, only to take all they owned as alms. It applied perfectly to this situation, just replaced religion. With family. The heartbroken mother probably needed him, even if he was a fraud. But in Kane's eyes, a total stranger was literally making himself at home, right where she lived. Even Suzumu, who'd been raised lovingly by his parents, could imagine just how painful that was. <laughs> I could live at manga cafes for several months if I used all my money. That way, I could leave home before I even graduated. それが彼女の強さなのか。
辛さを表に出せない気の毒な性分なのかはわからないけれどね<笑>老人ホームに若者が行くんだからさやっぱ若さを前面に出したものにしたいよね前にニュースで老人ホームでプロレスを披露したら好評なんて見たことがあったような。All right, why don't we stop it there? This is Odd Apostrophe. You've been watching Iwaihime on PC. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed watching. I will see you at the next stream.